Hello, anatomy students. In this podcast, I'm going to be reviewing the bones of the vertebral column, beginning with the cervical vertebrae. The vertebral column goes by several names, including the spinal column, the backbone, or simply the spine. In the adult body, it is composed of a total of 26 bones called vertebrae. It surrounds and protects the spinal cord and provides strength and flexibility to the body, allowing it to move freely in all directions. The vertebral column also provides support for the skull and is an attachment point for the muscles of the back and arms, the pelvic or shoulder girdle, and the ribs. The different types of vertebrae include the cervical vertebrae. There are seven cervical vertebrae located in the neck, and these are shown here in the model in yellow. The thoracic vertebrae. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae located in the thorax, or chest region. And these are colored orange in the model. The lumbar vertebrae. There are five lumbar vertebrae that provide support to the lower back. And these are shown in red on the model. The sacrum. There is one sacrum that is made up of five fused sacral vertebrae. The sacrum is shown in blue in the model. And the coccyx, also called the tailbone. It is located directly below the sacrum. There is one coccyx that is made up of four fused coccygeal vertebrae. It is shown in green on the model. You can remember the numbers of cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae using this mealtime mnemonic. Breakfast is at 7 a.m., lunch is at 12 p.m., dinner is at 5 p.m., first snack is the sacrum, and the second snack is the coccyx. Located in between the vertebrae are the intervertebral discs. The discs are strong pads of connective tissue, made up mostly of fibrocartilage, and act as shock absorbers for the upper body. They're also very flexible and allow the body to move in a variety of ways. Let's now review the vertebrae and their bony landmarks, beginning with the cervical vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae are the smallest of the vertebral bones. The first two cervical vertebrae are found at the top of the vertebral column and are uniquely different in overall shape from the other cervical vertebrae. The first cervical vertebra, or C1, is called the atlas. This name refers to the Greek god Atlas that held up the earth on his shoulders. The job of the atlas bone is to hold up the skull and its shape permits the head to nod up and down, such as when you are nodding yes. The atlas is also involved in rotational movement of the head, with the help of the second cervical vertebra, such as when you turn your head side to side when you are shaking your head no. The atlas works together with the second cervical vertebra, called C2, or the axis, which is located directly underneath the atlas. Together, they form a pivot joint, where the axis below is more stationary, which allows the atlas to rotate against it. You can easily recognize the cervical vertebrae from the other types of vertebrae, because all cervical vertebrae have openings called the transverse foramina found in their transverse processes. Remember from previous podcasts that the word foramina is the plural form of foramen. In the cervical vertebrae, the transverse foramina allow the vertebral arteries, veins, and nerves to pass through the neck. Another way to recognize a cervical vertebra is by looking at the spinous process, which is the large posterior extension of the cervical vertebra. On C2 through C6, it is often bifid, which means it is forked, branching into two small tips. You can recognize the atlas because it resembles a smiling face wearing eyeglasses. The bony landmarks of the atlas 
include the superior articular facets. These are large and look like the lenses in the pair of eyeglasses. A facet is a flat or slightly curved surface that articulates with another bone to form a joint. The superior articular facets are concave and articulate with the occipital condyles of the skull, allowing the head to nod up and down in a rocking chair-like fashion. The anterior arch is the handle that connects the eyeglasses together. The posterior arch looks like the smile on the face. The vertebral foramen is the large opening that surrounds the spinal cord. The transverse processes are the arms of the eyeglasses. They extend laterally to each side. The transverse foramina are located within the transverse processes. The inferior articular facets are located on the bottom, the inferior side of the atlas, and they articulate with C2, the axis located directly below them. The atlas does not have a vertebral body or a spinous process, also called the spine, as we find in the other cervical vertebrae. The bony landmarks of the axis include the vertebral body. This is the thick, round, anterior region of the bone that is the major weight-bearing parts of a vertebra. The dens, or odontoid process. Odontoid means tooth-like, and dens is short for dental. This is a unique part of the axis that resembles a small tooth. It inserts superiorly through the vertebral foramen of the atlas and is located just posterior to the anterior arch of the atlas. It allows the atlas to pivot from side to side as you shake your head no. The other landmarks of the axis include the superior articular facets. These form joints with the two inferior articular facets of the atlas, allowing the two bones to connect together and also articulate with each other. There's a short transverse process on each lateral side of the bone, and in each transverse process is a transverse foramen. There are two inferior articular facets located on the underside of the axis. These form joints with two superior articular processes of the vertebra immediately below them. The lamina are the flat walls that make up the posterior vertebral arch. The vertebral foramen and the spinous process, or spine, which is the posterior projection of the vertebra. The remaining cervical vertebrae, C2 through C7, contain most of the same landmarks as the axis, with the exception of the dens. Here is the vertebral body. Remember, this is always anterior. The transverse processes. Each of these contains a transverse foramen. The pedicles. These are short, thick processes that connect the laminae to the vertebral body. The vertebral foramen. The superior articular facets. and underneath the inferior articular facets, the posterior spinous process, often simply called the spine, which is often bifid or forked, and together the vertebral foramen, the pedicles, the transverse processes, 
the laminae, and the spinous process make up the vertebral arch, which is sometimes called the neural arch, which is the large posterior parts of the cervical vertebra.